All right, we're here in the lab today. We're going to be talking about an ICP variable speed heat pump. Uh, a heat pump, like an air conditioning unit, has a compressor, has an outdoor coil, has an indoor evaporator coil. Uh, but with a heat pump, it can reverse the rotation of the refrigerant. And when we're in the heating mode, our condenser coil actually becomes the indoor coil, and our evaporator becomes the outdoor coil. We're going to pick up heat from the outdoor air, transfer, transfer it into the indoor unit where we're going to reject the heat, just like the condenser does, uh, in order to add heat to our occupied space. There's a, there are a few things that are different about the uh, heat pump, and uh, let's take a, we'll take a look at that. Um, we'll take a look at the different components that are um, on a heat pump. Okay, some of the uh, components that we're going to do find on the variable speed heat pump, and it's uh, unique strictly to the variable speed heat pump, is this is a variable speed drive here. Okay, this is going to run this compressor at five different speeds. Uh, and this gives us better capacity control, gives us better humidity control. Uh, but depending on the outdoor air temperature and depending on the uh, indoor air temperature, how far we are away from set point, uh, that's going to determine how fast our compressor uh, is going to run, what speed it's going to run. It's going to run through, like I said, five different speeds. So we have a variable speed drive here. That's one of the things uh, that is different about a variable speed heat pump. Another thing I want to point out is the communication plug. The outdoor unit communicates with the indoor unit and the user interface through the communication plug. Uh, with the variable speed heat pump, we only need two wires uh, connected to the communication plug. Here we can see, though, we have three wires. The white wire uh, is an additional wire. Uh, that's a common, and that can help improve communication uh, when we have uh, communication failures, uh, but is not necessarily needed. Just above the communication uh, plug and to the left, is a model plug and this tells the control board what model number the unit is and when you're going if you're going to replace the control board uh, you have to take the model plug off of the old board and relocate it to the new board so that the new board knows uh, what model the unit is the control board along with the uh, communication to the indoor and to the user user interface uh, decides whether the unit is going to run in cooling, heating, or defrost. Remember with a heat pump, our outdoor coil is our evaporator. During the winter time, we're going to, during cool weather, uh, we're going to have moisture on the coil. It's going to start to freeze up. Our coil is going to start to freeze up, ice up. Uh, when it does, our airflow is going to be uh, slowed down. We want to be able to defrost that coil, so we have to go into a defrost mode. If we take a look at the in, inside here, our components on our variable speed heat pump, like I said, many of them are uh, standard in an air conditioning unit. Underneath our cover here, underneath our sound cover here, we have our compressor, although this happens to be a rotary compressor rather than a scroll or a reciprocating compressor. Uh, this moves the refrigerant around the system and it, it takes the low pressure, increases it to a high pressure, okay? Uh, on a heat pump, you can see down here we have an accumulator, okay? This would be typ typical for any heat pump. Uh, we also have it, of course, on our variable speed heat pump. But the accumulator, that's going to help prevent liquid refrigerant from coming back to the compressor. Remember, our outdoor coil becomes the evaporator in the heating mode, okay? As it gets colder and colder outside, uh, we have less ability to evaporate our liquid refrigerant off. So we have more and more of a tendency as it gets colder out to flood liquid back to the compressor. That's what the accumulator is going to do. It's going to catch that liquid refrigerant uh, before it gets back to the compressor and uh, prevent liquid flood back. We have our reversing valve down here. This is our reversing valve, okay? And you're going to find this. This is typical on any heat pump. Uh, not unique to the variable speed, but the reversing valve does exactly what it sounds like it does. It reverses the flow of the refrigerant. In the uh, summertime or in the cooling mode, it's going to send the discharge gas to our outdoor coil, which is our condenser. But when it switches over to the heating mode, it's going to send our hot gas to the indoor coil, 
uh, uh, which becomes our cadenser coil, the indoor coil, becomes the cadenser coil in the heating mode. So the reversing valve is going to take care of that, switch the, the flow of refrigerant. One of the things here that you can see here, we have a EXV, an electronic expansion valve, okay? This is the metering device for the outdoor unit in the heating mode, okay? So when it's running in the heating mode, our EXV does the metering of the refrigerant uh, to our evaporator, which is our outdoor coil. Uh, so this would be our, e this is our EXV. One of the things that is unique to this particular, the, this variable speed heat pump is the PEV, or the pressure equalization valve. Because this is a rotary compressor I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have a lot of starting, the rotary compressor doesn't have a lot of starting torque. The PEV valve will open 90 seconds before uh, the compressor tries to start and it equalizes the, the pressure from the high side to the low side so that the compressor, the compressor pressures are equalized before it tries to start. You can see the back side here. This is the back side of the variable speed drive. This is, these are plates for, to help cool the um, variable speed drive. Uh, it's important that these are kept, these, these are kept clean. Uh, you don't want uh, leaves or anything uh, uh, plugging these up. Uh, as a general rule, they will stay pretty clean, but you want to make sure that they stay clean. And you can see the, uh, we just have the typical uh, pressure switches. We have a low pressure switch and we have a high pressure switch, which uh, that w could be typical on in any air conditioning unit. It doesn't have, that doesn't have to be a heat pump or e a variable speed heat pump. Uh, pressure switches can be found on uh, any type of air conditioning or heat pump unit. Okay, another thing that you're going to find on the heat pump is this, in this case, it happens to be an outdoor air thermistor. We can see it down here. Um, this is checking the temperature of the outdoor coil. Uh, on some heat pumps, it may be an outdoor air thermostat. Uh, but what that's looking at is how cold is the, is the coil getting. Uh, remember, in the heating mode, the, this is our evaporator coil. It's going to start the ice up. Uh, the more it ices up, the colder the coil is going to get. Uh, that the mister or the frost thermostat is going to look at the temperature of that coil. Uh, when our board uh, senses it's time for a defrost uh, period, uh, it's going to look at that temperature and decide whether it needs to defrost or not. Uh, and then it's also going to help to terminate the defrost. Uh, once the coil is defrosted, the, the temperature sensor will pick it up and uh, terminate the defrost cycle. In the defrost cycle, um, the reversing valve actually reverses again to our outdoor coil actually becomes the condenser again. Our evaporator becomes the, uh, our indoor coil becomes the evaporator again. So we're pumping hot gas through the outdoor coil during the defrost cycle uh, to try to melt the ice off of it. Another thing I want to point out uh, you're going to find on a heat pump is you're going to, have to find a third access fitting here, okay? Uh, what this is on a heat pump is this is a constant low pressure, a constant suction pressure uh, tap here, okay? Remember in the heat pump, our vapor line here in the cooling mode, that's our low pressure or our suction pressure, but as soon as we switch over to our heating mode, this becomes high pressure or discharge pressure, okay? Remember, we're pumping the hot gas over to the indoor unit uh, during the heating mode, so this becomes high pressure. So. This is a constant low pressure uh, fitting for a heat pump. So when, when you're put, hooking up your gauges, you'd hook up uh, your low side uh, gauge to here and your high side uh, gauge to your liquid line, uh, which will uh, be a constant uh, high, on the high pressure side. Now another thing I want to point out is when this goes to start, uh, our condenser fan motor is an ECM fan motor, okay? Uh, that is a variable, it's a variable speed motor too, okay? When this goes to start, this motor is going to rock back and forth. Uh, it looks almost like it's stuck or something or like it may, uh, maybe it's hitting something or whatever. Uh, but no, that's normal. With an ECM fan motor, it's going to rock back and forth just a little bit. Uh, it's going to check its rotation, then it'll start up and uh, it'll build up, uh, build up to the proper speed.
Well, you can see the fan motor rock back and forth. Uh, now it's going to uh, start building up uh, to the proper speed. Now that's normal, that's normal operation. So right now, we're actually running into heating mode. Our compressor is pumping the hot gas over to our indoor coil to heat the space. Okay, with the variable speed heat pump, uh, our control is going to be, we're going to use the observer control here. You can see it's a touch screen uh, control here. Uh, we can hit mode, uh, we go and we can select cooling, heating, uh, put in automatic or emergency heat. Um, if we want to go into the programming part of this uh, the thermostat or control, we're going to hit the fan button hold it for 10 seconds. That'll take us into the programming mode. And here, we can see there's several other things here, but let's just say look at the equipment. We won't get into everything today. Uh, we can see the model uh, number of the indoor unit and the uh, model number of the outdoor unit. If we hit status here, we go into status. We can see right now the heat pump's running under the third speed, under the third stage, okay? Now remember that I said I had five speeds here. This will go up to five speeds depending on uh, the outdoor air temperature and the, uh, how far you are away from set point. Uh, this will uh, change its speeds. Uh, you can see several other things on here too, suction temperature, suction pressure, you can see on here, the RPMs of the compressor. So you can see, you see things in here. Uh, but this is the observer control. Uh, that's what's controlling. This is our controller for the uh, heat pump. So that's uh, pretty much it. Our uh, heat pump, remember, in the winter time, is gonna pump the hot gas to the indoor coil uh, to reject heat uh, to our occupied space to heat it. In the summertime, it's gonna operate just like an air conditioning unit. Our indoor coil, uh, I didn't mention, that has a TXV with a bypass check valve inside it, built inside the, uh, inside the TXV, uh, so that when we're operating in the heating mode, uh, it just bypasses the indoor TXV and goes to our outdoor metering device, which was that EXV that I showed you earlier. Um, but uh, that's pretty much the operation of a variable speed heat pump.